This is Taya Graham reporting for The Real News Network in Annapolis, Maryland. With scandals continuing to plague the Baltimore City Police Department and a troubled criminal justice system, advocates have been pushing for change at the state capitol again. But will they succeed? It's one half of the health department budget. What is wrong with us down here in Annapolis? It was a bill that had been debated before, twice. A modest proposal to allow two civilians on police trial boards. Baltimore City is very unique from other parts of the state, and you can see the types of issues that we are having, especially currently with the police department. Internal disciplinary bodies that meet out punishment for administrative charges. The involvement of the, of the civilians, of the citizens of Baltimore City who pay the bill, should have some say. But like past efforts, this bill looked sure to fail. Part of the problem? Democrat Bobby Zirkin. Without getting into the philosophy of it, it seems that if you got a PBJ for a misdemeanor, you would not get a hearing. But if you got convicted of a misdemeanor, you would. That seems to make zero sense. For a misdemeanor of more than one year, that is, the authorized sentence is more than one year, then our position is we should treat that as a felony. But the Real News also caught this, a contingent of members of the state's powerful police union watching the proceedings closely. We're strongly opposed to it. In fact, we asked Baltimore's FOP president, Gene Ryan, what was wrong with civilian input particularly given the recent scandal involving the Gun Trace Task Force. What do you have to say to the mayor? The mayor said, hey, FOP, it's time. They, she literally called you out in that hearing. What do you have to say to that? I've heard that, but um, that it's a negotiated item. We should be talking about this at the table. We're, I, I'll say this. Okay. We're not afraid of civilians on the trial board, but there are certain specifics in training and education that we're going, we will demand for that to happen. But we're not completely opposed to civilians on the trial board. And Zirkin has reasons to listen. Thousands of dollars of donations from the FOP, according to these campaign records. But money is only part of the problem. Across the street, reform is facing obstacles too. As a member of the Black Caucus, I am disappointed that we didn't use our collective power to get the things that we needed for the people that we supposed to represent. Including a referendum to let Marylanders vote on legalizing marijuana. What do you think, just talking to the committee, do you think it has a chance of getting out of committee? Well, I think if you look at the polling numbers, it's clear uh, how much of the public supports this. 64% um, of likely voters in Maryland are supportive of taxing and regulating marijuana for adult use. Um, so we're hopeful that, particularly in an election year, that the delegates will uh, follow the will of their constituents. Which, incidentally, the state afforded to voters when the proposal to legalize gambling was put on the ballot. Why can we vote for gambling, but why are they going to block marijuana? We have suffered in part from the fetishizing of law enforcement. We sort of think that cops, because we admire their bravery, must be really intelligent. But in this area, they've been really stupid. Just four years ago, the chief of police of Annapolis came in and testified before the Senate Judicial Proceedings Committee. I was in the room. I was in the room and he said that the chief of police representing all the chiefs of police says, I remember 37 people died in Denver the first day marijuana was legalized in 2012. And you're looking around saying, wait a minute, that didn't happen. But along with denying voters their say on marijuana, several other police reform proposals face pushback. I mean, the Judiciary Committee seems to block almost everything. Why is that? Only comment I'm going to mention about judiciary. It's very interesting. Uh, I haven't been able to get any of my bills that I thought were very progressive uh, from, um, oh, I think I did get one. No, 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 it didn't come out judicial. It came out, it came out of ways and means. Uh, I'm like 0427. If I was a baseball player, <laughs> I would, I would be, I'd probably been sent back to the minor. Perhaps the only possibility left in Annapolis for change rests with Senator Bill Ferguson, who wants to empower a state commission to investigate the Baltimore police. And it largely stems from the unbelievably horrific and outrageous uh, testimony that we heard as part of the gun trace task force hearings that, uh, that, that were uh, prosecuted federally uh, a few weeks back were the conclusion. 
And what came out in that, um, in, in that trial was just absolutely unbelievable. And so it's my belief that we really have to get to the bottom of that. We have to know who knew what, when did they know it, and that's the only way that we can move forward. His reason, the revelations during the trial of two of the officers, raised questions about the command staff. The, out, the other jurisdictions do not defer to Baltimore when it comes to their own police department. What has been the feedback from membership you've gotten in terms of the possibility of this bill passing? So it's interesting. Not many people know the history of BPD and that it became a state agency back in the Civil War. And um, for local issues, generally, there's a fair amount of discretion. Of course, when it comes to Baltimore City, there is always skepticism within the legislature from non-Baltimore legislators. Um, and so this is an issue that we've continually had to deal with. Um, on this commission, I think there is a general sense that we have to do something. And so I think there is a little bit more interest than generally there would be. Which raises the question, in a purportedly blue state, is reform even possible? We need more passion down here. And quite frankly, anger may not be a bad emotion down here when you uh, you have that many members and you come away with nothing. This is Taya Graham and Stephen Janis reporting for The Real News Network in Annapolis, Maryland.